Okay, this will be a quick demonstration on uh, how to use a, a drum scanner. Uh, this scanner is a Screen 1045 AI. Uh, originally, I think it was uh, 1998 or 9, um, that I found a packing slip. This scanner cost about $67,000. But you can pick them up now uh, pretty reasonable for three or 4000 And um, it's well worth it because the, uh, the drum scanner is probably the best skin that you can get uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, making a negative, a positive, or uh, reflective art. You take the drum, it's already uh, sandwiched between a piece of mylar and scanning uh, mounter, mounting fluid, so uh, it's ready to go. Uh, put it on the cuff and line it up. There's usually uh, an indication of how to uh, how to get it on here, and then turn it until you hear it click like that. Uh, push the appropriate button to move the head over so that the lens uh, will be on something in the negative or the positive or the reflective art that you can focus on. Uh, one of the nice things about drum scanners is uh, that you can actually focus on um, a portion of the, uh, the negative. Then move the head over so that the uh, lens will be pointing right on, uh, not through the negative, but through the mylar and the scanning fluid that's sandwiched together. So it's a clear part of, of that that you need to sort of calibrate the scanner. Okay. And as it's calibrating, uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the um, uh, scanner itself. The programs uh, that were originally made for the, uh, the software was very early on in the digital age, really. And uh, they're not as sophisticated as the uh, uh, flatbed scanners are today. Now, through testing, I found out that uh, uh, the PMTs, which is a photo multiplier tube that uh, drum scanners uh, incorporate, uh, are much, end up being much sharper. Uh, the color, uh, you have a lot more variables to adjust color, but uh, the color in the new software on the flatbed scanners is probably a little bit better than, um, uh, or easier, I should say, to manipulate than the, uh, the drum scanner. But this has um, so many parts of the, the software can, uh, can actually uh, adjust the, uh, the color that it's often amazing to me. Now I'm going to open up the program. <coughs> And um, as it's calibrating here, you can see uh, uh, that's pretty much the program, the software program. And in this particular scanner, the, the negative, because they didn't do that many negatives back in uh, uh, 1999, um, they did more positives. And you can hear that it's ready to, uh, to actually scan now. It's calibrated itself. Uh, the software uh, wasn't as sophisticated, and the uh, uh, actual uh, uh, scans that you can make with the drum scanner um, were, uh, you know, it's a little harder to put together than just to lay it on a, a flatbed. But um, I've tested the high-end flatbeds, and nothing compares to, to the photomultiplier tube and uh, the sharpness that you can get. And since I'm doing large prints, six by eight feet uh, on eight by ten negatives, um, um, I prefer this scanner over any flatbed. Uh, and I've compared uh, both of them, the high-end Cytex, Creo, Kodak, which is now out of business, scanner, which is one of the better flatbed scanners out there. And um, it's still not as sharp as the, uh, uh, the drum scans that you can achieve. Okay, so we're going to line this up. It's calibrated, ready to go. I'm going to set this for a starting point. They call it original point here on the scanner. Put 
put the top down, uh, go back to my pre-scan, <coughs> uh, put the scanner online, and <coughs> do a pre-scan. Now what comes up here is highlight density, shadow density uh, for negative film, and all of these adjust color, red, blue, green. And I've already done that, so it's uh, uh, pretty much adjusted, but you have a lot of uh, different uh, ways to adjust color in the, uh, uh, the software. Now you can see it coming up on the screen. And just like any of the scanner software that, that you have access to today, uh, you'll be able to sort of uh, open it up, do the whole negative, or uh, close it down and, and uh, do portions of the negative. Uh, whatever size you want. This particular scanner uh, does 48 bit, also does 24, and uh, 48 bit simply means there's 16 bits per channel, red, blue, green, and uh, I can scan up to 8,000 dpi, so it will give me a fairly large scan. Now, this particular case, I'm just going to scan it at uh, 1,700 dpi because I only need a 1.1 gigabyte file and uh, you can see uh, I can move the uh, what I call the marching ants uh, and adjust them to any size. I'm going to do the full negative and then if I have any cropping, a little bit of cropping to do, uh, I'll do that later. Okay, so I'm going to do the full negative and um, I'm going to do it at 48 bits, uh, 1700 dpi That'll give me, like I said uh, before, a 1.1 gigabyte file or right around there. And that's plenty big, um, enough file to do a six foot by eight foot um, inkjet print uh, from this particular negative. And uh, I'll get great quality uh, because uh, of the drum scan. So I'm gonna start the scanner. Uh, it's now processing and I'm going to run it at half speed so I don't get any kind of vibration. And um, half speed, it'll probably be about an hour and 15, 20 minutes to, uh, to complete the scan. Full speed, it would be about half of that time. That's pretty much it.